You could have a seat. And now we will hear from our <coughs> new lead pastor, from my new lead pastor, Pastor Eric Holmstrom. Yeah. Man, um, in our planning, I don't remember who thought it'd be a good idea for me to preach after that. Um, but uh, as we were worshiping together, I was just thinking about um, when Sarah and I and Charlie first came here uh, 11 years ago and uh, came here to be our high school pastor and just immediately fell in love with this church, with this diverse intergenerational body of Christ with a historic tradition of reaching people and meeting the needs of those in our community and around the world. And we were just blown away to be here. And I remember the very first Sunday uh, when Pastor Glenn invited Sarah and I to be up front and to share a little bit of our heart for high school students. And Charlie was only one at that point and, and he wouldn't stay in our arms. And so he just kind of started crawling up into the bleachers that we had. And Pastor Glenn just followed him. That was his job was just following Charlie as Sarah and I were sharing. And, and then we eventually checked him into the nursery. And, and on our very first Sunday here, Charlie bit somebody in the nursery, bit a kid in the nursery. And I remember Sarah and I thinking, we're gonna get fired on day two of being at Purpose Church. And so, church, I'm just happy to share with you, Charlie's 12 years old and he rarely bites now. I mean, it's, it's a rare occasion. It's a rare occasion that he bites. But we, with every month and with every year, have just grown to love this church more and more. So I'm gonna tell you what I tell you every time I'm up here. I love you, Purpose Church. I love you, church family, and I love you so much. And, uh, and I always tell you, I love you, Purpose Church, and even more than anything, you need to know God loves you. And there's some of you here who you're a visitor or a guest, or uh, it's been a long time and you forgot about that, or you never heard that before. Or you're here like, what's this happening right now? This is your first time in church in a while? And I'm just feeling the Holy Spirit leading me to remind you or tell you, God loves you, that he loves you so much. And he has a purpose and a plan for your life. Well, let's open our Bibles to 1 Peter chapter five, and we're just gonna spend a minute there. And while you're flipping to 1 Peter chapter five, I wanna encourage you. At the end of our time together, I wanna in, uh, invite you to head out to the community terrace. We have food trucks, we have games, we have dessert, we have all kinds of cool stuff out there. The Gundersons will be out in the community terrace after this service, and I know they would love to say hi to you, and so please join us. But the question I wanna just briefly talk about for a minute is this. What makes a good and godly pastor? And Pastor Greg so beautifully read that scripture from Peter who walked with Jesus and then inspired by the Holy Spirit wrote these words. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. You see, a good and godly pastor recognizes from the outset that the church belongs to God, that Jesus is, always has been, and always will be the leader of the church. But he raises up pastors and leaders and teams of people to be good and godly pastors who shepherd. And they shepherd by watching over the church, serving the church, and setting an example for the church. And for the last 11 years, I have had the privilege of having a front row seat, courtside seat, to watch Pastor Glenn and Kimberly do just that. Number one, I've seen you watch over the church. Pastor Glenn and Kimberly, you are a man and a woman of prayer. 
that you have been praying for this church for the last 31 years. And Pastor Glenn frequently will circle the worship center praying for this church. He, I've been in several meetings with Pastor Glenn where the stakes feel really high and we gotta make a really difficult decision and it feels like time is running out. And Pastor Glenn will without fail stop us in the middle of that meeting and say, we need to pray. And, and, and the sinful side of me says, no, we need to make a decision. We gotta make a decision. But Pastor Glenn is always drawing us back to prayer. I've been in several occasions where Pastor Glenn will use the biblical phrase, Lord willing, when he's talking about his future plans and visions and dreams for the church because he has a heart that wants to watch over us, to, to accomplish what's ultimately best for us. Glenn and Kimberly, you care deeply about the spiritual, the financial, and the overall well-being of our church. And that leads you to put yourselves last. In fact, uh, a while ago, Pastor Glenn shared with me that growing up in his home, there were three childhood heroes in his home. The first was his local church pastor. The second was Billy Graham. And the third was Dwight Eisenhower. I said, okay, Glenn, you gotta tell me, why Dwight Eisenhower? And he said, well, Dwight Eisenhower at that time was the five-star general of the Allied Forces when Glenn's dad served in the army in World War II. I remember that, and then a couple months ago, I was reading a leadership book, and, and they quoted Dwight Eisenhower. And when I read this quote, I thought, oh my goodness, this so perfectly describes the kinds of leaders Pastor Glenn and Kimberly are. Dwight Eisenhower once said this, leadership consists of nothing but taking responsibility for everything that goes wrong and giving your subordinates credit for everything that goes well. And if you've led with Pastor Glenn for any amount of time, you have seen him do this. That Whenever, it's rare, but whenever things don't go well under his leadership, he is the first to take credit even, or he's the first to take the blame for it even when it's not his fault. But when things go great, and they often do under Pastor Glenn's leadership, he is the first to give credit away to everyone else. Uh, the most acute example I could think of is recently, Purpose Church, you all, were featured in Outreach's magazine, 100 Fastest Growing Churches. That I've been saying this for a while, I don't know why, but God is disproportionately blessing Purpose Church. And we've become one of the 100 fastest growing churches in the country, which is incredibly exciting because that means we've had the opportunity to share the gospel with more people, to disciple more people, to help more people fall in love with Jesus and make a difference in their world. And I know this was one of Pastor Glenn's lifelong ministry goals because he loves people and wants more people to know Jesus. And yet when he was interviewed by the journalist writing the article, this was his moment. This was the opportunity for him to share what he had been doing the last 31 years, the strategies, the philosophy, the vision for ministry. And yet as you'll see in your program today, you can read it later. What did Pastor Glenn do? He gave all the credit away. He pointed to everyone else because that's what great leaders do. Number two, I've seen you both serve the church. And Kimberly, I wanna to talk to you for a moment. You have served so faithfully at this church for the last 31 years. Has she not, church? <laughs> Kimberly, the first lady, she has just done a phenomenal job of serving here. You've led countless women's Bible studies. You've preached on so many occasions and, and your words have impacted us and transformed us. You have loved and served your incredible family. Can we thank the Gunderson family? What an amazing group of people that Kimberly, you have discipled and loved and served. And Kimberly, you have such a passion 
for the most vulnerable in our community, whether it's serving in our foster care ministry or helping to support adoptions. You started New Community Academy to help students who needed an alternative schooling environment. And most recently, you have been spearheading our champions special needs ministry here at Purpose Church. And she does it all by the power of the Holy Spirit because you are courageous. And I know that your favorite Bible character is Ruth because Ruth was a woman of courage. And Kimberly, you have been a faithful, fearless woman of courage. In fact, you're so, cor- you're so courageous and you're so accomplished that filling your shoes is absolutely terrifying. I mean, Sarah and I talk on a regular basis about how terrified we are about sh- filling your guys' shoes. And I remember recently I sent you a message talking about just that. And then you responded with the most humble, incredible response. It just demonstrated how empowering you are as a leader. You said, I'm pretty sure you don't need to worry about filling our shoes. (laughs) Go and find a new pair and make them all your own. Who says that? I mean, (laughs) gosh. And... And Glenn, I have watched you serve the local church and I've watched you serve the global church. And, and Pastor Glenn, and he's, he's got very few sins. One of them is he lies to you. When he gets up here and says that he only has one superpower, he is lying to you. <laughs> he's got so many superpowers. He's such an incredible pastor and leader an encourager and preacher of God's word and developer of people. I mean, he's just got innumerable gifts. And and I always kind of wonder, maybe you've wondered too, like how is he so awesome when we greet him here and he meets us and he says his words of encouragement. What is it that makes him so incredible? And obviously it's the Holy Spirit and it's his love for God's word and it's his leadership expertise. But when Glenn and I were in India together, I discovered that there is another source that helps Pastor Glenn be the amazing superpower pastor that he is. It is this drink to the left picture right there, the orange Fanta, my friends. Let me just tell you, Pastor Glenn was downing the orange Fanta like it was oxygen that he was breathing. It was pretty wild. And yet all that goodness mixed together. I got to watch Pastor Glenn preach and lead and encourage pastors and leaders and people in the villages that we went to. In fact, our whole team would would eventually get back into the car after a full day of ministry and we'd have to wait. And we waited and we waited and we waited because Pastor Glenn wasn't done doing ministry yet. And maybe the Gunderson family can attest to this. You've had this experience before. Because Pastor Glenn just wanted to continue praying and encouraging and investing and serving everyone he could. And number three, I've seen you both set an example for the church. Last month, I read a book called Big Shoes to Fill. And as soon as I saw the title for that book, I instantly knew I need to devour this thing. I need to read this book. I need to memorize it because I've got big shoes to fill. I mean, you're you're so beloved and faithful and you're so inspiring. And and as, as we've been in this journey these last couple months and as we've been preparing, I've been preparing to be your next lead pastor and some of you will come up and congratulate me or talk to me and and all of you are so nice and kind but I I see it in your face, I see it in your eyes when when you're like, okay, you're you're following the great Glenn Gunderson. Um, I I can see it in your eyes, you're going, are you stupid? Like what's wrong with you? Why would you want to do that? And so I was reading this book and towards the end, there's a section called How to Leave a Lasting Impression. And when I read this section, I instantly knew these words describe Pastor Glenn and Kimberly and what they've done. They describe what great leaders do. And if you wanna be a great leader, and all of you are leaders, you're a leader in any sphere of your life, you're a leader with your family, with your, with your people you work with in your community, in your neighborhood. You're all leaders, and Pastor Glenn and Kimberly have modeled this so well. Gavin Adams said, anyone can make an impression. How can you leave an impression worth remembering? It begins by deciding who 
not what your legacy will be. From there, spend time as a leader doing the following. Offer encouragement, give opportunities, fight for the relationship, and don't hoard what you know. Pastor Glenn and Kimberly, your entire ministry career could be summarized simply by this. You decided that your legacy would be about who you would invest in. And God's used you to build a thriving church, a thriving and healthy ministry culture, a ministry that reaches the needs and shares the gospel with people in our community and all around the world. But it's because you first focused on investing in us. I mean, all of us here today, we are a bunch of who's. We are a bunch of who's. All of us that are here, those of us watching online and the thousands and thousands that couldn't be here today, we are a bunch of who's that you decided to pour your life into and we will be forever grateful for that. John Maxwell says that success is when those who know you best respect you most, and I know you both well, and I respect you greatly. Pastor Glenn and Kimberly, thank you. Thank you for giving us a vision and a picture of what it looks like to start strong, to endure and persevere, and to finish strong. Our world desperately needs more examples like that, and you have finished well. Now, to you, my Purpose Church family, who I love so much and who I'm so honored and humbled to get to be your next lead pastor, here's my promise to you, that I believe it is my calling to lead every generation, to leverage everything they have to advance God's kingdom, that that's what I'm here for, that's what I'm striving for, that's what I'm believing my job is, is to help lead every generation, to leverage everything they have to advance God's kingdom. And we are gonna do that together. And with the example of Pastor Glenn and Kimberly, and most importantly, in obedience to God and his word, Purpose Church, I promise you that I will strive by God's grace to be a good and godly pastor and shepherd who follows Jesus closely and watches over this church serves this church, and sets an example for this church. Glenn and Kimberly, thank you. Glenn and Kimberly, thank you for saying yes to Jesus. Thank you for moving your family across the country 31 years ago. You both have been good and godly shepherds, and we love you, Gunderson family. Now, before we transition into our last song together, we're gonna sing the blessing together. And Pastor Glenn and Kimberly actually picked out this song for us because it's their prayer over us as a church. But before we sing our next song, I wanna invite all of you, I wanna invite all of you back to Purpose Church next Sunday, especially if you're a visitor or a guest, especially if you're disenchanted by the church, especially if you're disinterested in Christianity, especially if you're skeptical that God exists or that he might want to work in your life. I don't know what your reason is for not wanting to come back, but I wanna invite you to give us a shot. I wanna invite you to come back whether you wanna grow deeper in your relationship with Jesus or you wanna discover who he is for the first time. Because next Sunday, I'll be beginning a series at Purpose Church called We Are That Kind of Church. Eight essentials for every church that God blesses, that Satan hates, and that the world needs. And Purpose Church, I am so convinced that in the years to come, in the decades to come, we are gonna see God do incredible things through you, through each one of us. 
Pastor Glenn has said on multiple occasions that we have had incredible days in the past. And that is true for the last 154 years. For the last 31 years, God has done incredible things. But God is disproportionately blessing this church. And he is not done with Purpose Church. And he has a reason and a purpose that you're here to be a part of seeing everyone everywhere following Jesus. And so Purpose Church, our best days are ahead of us. And together, and together, and through you, we are gonna see God do immeasurably more than all we could ever ask or imagine. So come back next Sunday. I also, also just gonna say, this, I also have a gift for all of you. I've got a tangible gift that I wanna give every single one of you, all of you that show up, and I think it's going to be a picture. It's gonna be a marker. It's gonna be one of those things that we look back on that shapes and, and reminds us of the future that God is writing through this church and through you.